Welcome to the New Dads Podcast. My name is Josh. And I'm Mark. I'm Jeff. And Tom's not here today just because he's got some stuff going on, a little bit of car trouble. Also, he's got some other things happening, which we will talk about when he gets back. We love you, Tom, and we miss you, and we wish you were here. Miss you, buddy. Because because of his sultry voice. <laughs> yes, oh, it his, is beautiful. His, his amazing hairline. Like, yep. But uh, it's also a top podcast where we talk about things like, today, I had to poop so bad that like I had to call my in-laws and pull over, go to their house, because I was on my way home. And I called them like, are you home? And they're like, why? I'm like, just, are you? Because you're going to want to leave. Because <laughs> you might want to exit. And I had like, it was, I, it was just down to the wire, like down to the wire. And I got there just in time to poop. Thank God for in-laws. And, and, and you, know what, you know what else you can thank God for is, do you remember your, your uh, father-in-law got me to change the hood fans in his bathrooms yes. this year? <laughs> Could you imagine if you had that, those other ones that did not work? If you didn't know, Mark and I uh, like worked on my in-laws' bathrooms. It was great. It was, it was, oh, it was great. Probably. We filmed it all. It's good. Uh, Mark taught me how to tile. It's great. I like, I'm basically a freaking super pro a little bit now. Not really, but nice. it was great. And so the bathrooms, were, I got to poop in the bathroom I helped make. It was, yeah. it was rewarding pooping yep. in the bathroom that you built. Yep. It was awesome. So I, I work with this guy who has the emergency poop all the time and his, <laughs> <laughs> all the time. He tells us these stories all the time and his, his wiping device of choice mm -hmm. socks. He keeps a spare pair of socks. Like, but why could, does he keep a spare toilet I, paper roll? Or wet wipes, or uh, yes, yes, or Bounty the Quicker Picker Upper, or anything. <laughs> why socks? Doesn't make any sense. I mean, sense. I can understand because socks are portable. I get that. Toilet paper can get wet. Socks can, you can wash them. So it's like a, it's like a reusable you diaper want, almost. You want to do his laundry? Yeah, like, that's like borderline as gross as a hanky, dude. That's worse than a hanky. That's awesome. Mark, what's uh, the worst thing no, you've ever no. used in a porta potty? Well, I've hey, listen. I, to say that I have I'm not part of the socks club, that would be a lie. Be a, like I've gone into driver? the porta potty. A hundred percent. I'm a full, to, I mean, he's exclusively been in porta potties the last twenty years. hundred like percent. So I feel like a construction I've, sock too, with like the sweat and stuff. It's almost like a wet white oh, yeah. made of oh, cotton. My, That's oh. gorgeous. So my wife will be like, like, man, you just burned through the socks. And I'm like, yeah, the, the, the driver on the honey wagon, he's just uh, not keeping up with the TP. Why are there socks in here? Oh, yeah. Josh Your used to work in a honey like wagon. Crap. <laughs> That's oh. because there's poop on them. I used to actually be a guy that drove around like sucking up the juice and porta potties. And, I, and I'm telling you this. You were a honey dipper? I'm telling you, he loved his job. I was a he honey dipper it. and I loved the job. Oh, yeah. I loved it. No, I didn't like this disgustingness of it. And man, have I seen some things. Okay? Yeah, corn and Like I went skins. to one porta potty and there was like, why would they put concrete in this? Like just guys just poured concrete in the toilet. What? That was a joke. Was it? Well, it ruined the porta potty. Yeah, I know, but anyway, it's funny. I enjoyed the job because I got to listen to podcasts and drive around and the machine was like super powerful. Like I never got, I never had to like that. The arm of that thing is huge, right? You just put oh. it in the toilet, suck, gone. How you many, throw one of those blue packets in. How many times Perfect. did you kick out? Shitter's full. <laughs> <laughs> many times. <laughs> but the, the grossest part was emptying that truck at the end of the day into the into the whatever the septic he had. Ugh. Man, I got stuff on my arms and stuff. Oh, yeah, just <laughs> not good news. Corn, yeah. you got corn like bean skins on your arm. <laughs> Why is there a peanut on my arm right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the dangers of kids on social media. Yeah, that's going to be a big topic. Florida's passing a law. We're seeing some really big changes, and we're going to talk about the dangers of having your kids on social media. So get ready to be judged by dads. I can only imagine it. with AI that it's getting worse and worse. Too. Oh, oh, God. Wait, just wait. Yeah. Uh, what else are you talking about, Jeff? And we also talk about uh, Black Swan events and mm -hmm. see through pants. Pants that you can see okay. through, like what? Like for lingerie? Is this a lingerie thing, or are we okay? Are we seeing videos? Oh, we'll we'll get on? there. We'll get we'll there. We'll get there. Yeah. All right. So as we do every single week, Jeff has the day of the week. This is Jeff's podcast today because he's got all the stuff he did, all the research for, mm. and he did all the hard work. But Jeff, what is the day of the year? March fourth. March fourth. We're airing. So this is National Suns Day. Not like the sun in the sky mm -hmm. or the stars off in space, but suns like uh, you know. When a man loves a woman, mm -hmm. sometimes you get a daughter, mm -hmm. sometimes you get a son. So it's the son's day. So okay. uh, my mom never, ever heard of son's day. So if someone could please <laughs> forward her this podcast, I would love a gift. <laughs> you think your mom listens to the podcast? Uh, probably not. Uh, <laughs> she probably would. 
Yeah, she probably I think, they, I think all yeah, people will enjoy this podcast. Okay, mom, you know, I love you. You don't have to give me a gift, but you could. <laughs> but don't tell my Just kids because my kids owe me tons of money and I'm not buying them nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm with you. Or just be like, how about on National Sunday? Hey, boys, you owe me like 20 grand. Now you only mean, you know, 19,997. <laughs> just reduce your debt. Yeah, we could do that. <laughs> All right. Good idea. And Jeff's got Elvis hanging from his mic. If you can't see it from the audio podcast, Jeff is a huge Elvis fan, which is weird, but also cool and quirky. But I bought him that. I bought yeah. Him that. It's my gift from Josh. It hangs on my Christmas tree. And when the Christmas is over, this is where it's going to hang from now on. Our mics can be like wow. rocks. We can have little. I found your, your stud finder. Yeah, I was looking for <laughs> that, actually. What the, oh, you just took the best dad oh. joke ever. Oh, look at that. Dad joke. Look at that. How could, is it supposed to beep? It's supposed to, here, let me see if it beeps. <laughs> yeah, it beeps when there's a stud. That's no, your, no, this one doesn't beep. Mark. It just lights up when there's a stud. If it's but green, if it's light green. up. It's light oh, up. Though, for me. Yeah, for That's sure. just the mark. It'll explode. You see all the comments, how studly he is? Oh, yeah. So other I'm national. I haven't seen it yet. I'm going to look at this today. National yeah, Day. National it's days. also National Marching Music Day. So get your marching band together, grab some cymbals, get a big bass drum, a couple of... Uh, I love the trombone players in a marching band. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Badass. That's impressive. Guy's, That's guy's pretty impressive. Yeah, that... Like, and those ones, those ones that can like go over their body and their body holds it up, they like hold it underneath the trombone. Is that the big one? Or the trombone no. the long one? Yeah, trombone, the long one. The long one What's yeah. the big one? That's a tuba. It's a tuba. Tuba, yeah, tuba, tuba. But my favorite uh, uh, when you see a marching band is when the trombone guys turn and like do oh, yeah. that, and then they then oh, they yeah. do all these like moves with it, and yeah, you they just got the feel flare. like those guys are the stars. Yeah. They're the stars of the show. Yeah, they got the flair. I say this as as a musician, the trombone is a mystery because the trombone has no valves. It's just it's the movement of the whatever you call that creates the pitch however far it goes. Yeah, the yeah. memorization you have to do the pitch, it's crazy. Sure, that's crazy to me. But you can also slide it's into like it, right? Trumpet. Can't you just yeah. slide into it? That's why it kind of sounds that way. So if you got an ear for music, yeah. you should be able to slide into your note, right? As you're, as yeah, that's you're, true. You can slide as you're going, but then you, I mean, it's just it's muscle memory. The point where you're like hitting it perfect. Like trombone is like next to violin, probably one of the hardest instruments. I think. No, I've heard French horn. French horn. Ah. Mm. Yep. French horn. You're right. All, All right. right. We've also Jeff? got uh, National Grammar Day, so we got to use some gooder words today for sure. Gooder. You know what? Here's my favorite okay, as a on my channel, the thing I have I call uh, grammar police, and uh, no, what do I call it? Yeah, grammar police. Wait, is it grammar police? Anyway, the people. Here's the thing that pissed me off the most about what people say. Here's some grammar mistake. And you do you do this, Mark? Say anyways instead of anyway. Oh yeah, Mark does. That. Sounds better. Especially if you say especially, kiss my ass. Everybody says that. I hate it. No, I get angry. Especially. Ex- spe- there's no X in there. No, especially. I know there's not, but I hear people say it all the time and the hairs on my neck stand up. I hate it. <laughs> or are you guyses? Anyway. Yeah. You guyses. <laughs> Marks. <laughs> Marks. <laughs> like, anyway. <laughs> so those are some, those are some pet peeves. I get that. And I'm sure I say things that like people don't. Oh, but, yeah. We're, yeah. People are going to be all over us during this podcast for the things we say. Oh yeah. Now we're going to be like, <laughs> we got to be careful what we say, Mark. <laughs> One last delicious day. It is national. I like the food ones. National pound cake day. So I had to look up what what makes a pound cake. Do you guys know what a pound cake is? Why it's a pound cake? It's pound of because it takes a pound of lard. Close. That's a good. I would say butter. It's actually pound of butter. It's actually four pounds. From what I read, it's a pound of flour of what a pound of butter, Mm -hmm. a pound of eggs, which Mm -hmm. seems ridiculous, and a pound of sugar. A lot of eggs and a pound of sugar. That sounds delicious. That sounds. <laughs> I'll fart a lot. I'm going to fart after that one. And then yeah. you, eggs, uh, man. four pound of eggs. That's what I a pound. That's what I heard. But I could be wrong. Somebody's going to correct this for sure if I am wrong. Typically cooked in a loaf pan or a bunt pan. That's the round one with the hole in the mm-hmm. middle, like the mm-hmm. giant donut. Mm-hmm. And then finished that's with some. Uh, yep. And then finished with some uh, powdered sugar or a glaze. <laughs> yes, that's what she said. <laughs> You know what you're picturing, you guys. Get, 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 get yeah, know, okay, so anyway, I love it. <laughs> All right, Jeff, you also have the dad joke this week, which is the most important part of the show. All right. By this, far. This week's dad joke. Even though, even though you guys already did the stud finder joke, the most classic <laughs> dad joke on the face of the planet. Mark, how many times have I done this joke to you in the world? Many times. Many, many times. Every time we find that thing. <laughs> I'm fairly certain that if you are a dad and you pick up a stud finder, you must do that joke. 
You're compelled. Yep. My wife told me to stop singing I'm a believer or that she'd leave me. Mm -hmm. I thought that she was kidding. But then I saw her face. I actually like that. I like that's a good one. Actually, yeah. I like, I like actually, that genuine laugh. I got that's a genuine laugh you got out of this, Jeff. I like yeah. that one. Yes. But that reminds me, I'm gonna add a last minute thing to this podcast. And it's the dad must do's. I think I oh, like yeah. this. Maybe think yeah. of something that dad always does, and you have to be a dad to do it. But we can only I do, already have mine. You can only do oh, one. You can, only, you can do one. only do one in a show because we'll run out of them. We'll just that'll be the whole hour. We'll just do that. I know. So here's mine because the merch is coming out soon, probably in the next couple of weeks. It's a doodad's merch coming up. When you pack a trailer, oh yeah, okay, and it's it's overflowing. You put the tarp on it. You put the tie. You put the ratchet straps on. And you do this. You shake it. And you're Count like, to three. We say it together. Anywhere. Count to three. We say yeah, it yeah. together. One, that, two, three. That ain't, that that ain't going, going anywhere. That ain't going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Do it again. One, <laughs> two, three. That, that ain't going, going anywhere. anywhere. That ain't going anywhere. <laughs> you have to. I know. Okay, we're, we're going to delay it by. Okay, Jeff, we're going to count to three and then, but four. Yeah. You say it on three, though, okay? Do you get it? We're going to count oh, to four, okay. but you do it on three. One, two, okay. three, four. That, that ain't, ain't going, going anywhere. anywhere. Yes. That was awesome. I love it. Okay, good. So that's what dads do. And if you've never seen your dad do that, I'm sorry about your childhood. <laughs> what else do we do, Mark, that dads exclusively we, do? We said uh, on the weekend that we were going to make a shirt, but I can't remember what it was. What that was, was that? the shirt. No, that that was the other one. We had another oh, shirt. I don't know. Oh. Anyways. We're going to do Anyways. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So what else? Okay, I have a, I have a million. I, you guys, a, I, I got one. Keep going. Okay, you got one, Jeff's got one. It is impossible for a dad to sneeze without hurricane force. <laughs> It's true. I don't know what it is. I've I've actually I got that problem. I've actually only seen one dad do it where he sneezes and he sneezes like the and he like keeps he it, holds in. it in. Like, yeah, he's yeah. gonna die from doing that. He's gonna have yeah. an aneurysm because, for doing that. Don't do that. Well, and it's a dad sneeze, it needs to come out. Yeah, there's I think the dad sneeze is actually like a low key hidden like exit of like rage that you need to get out because it just stays in there. And that's like how your body deals with it. You, you got to have a pair of uh, grass cutting shoes that yeah. are just absolutely disgusting. And they're, but they're new balance and they are just green. Yeah. And, and they are just for cutting grass. Only. And our wives Sacred. always want us to throw them out. Yeah. We would never will. Mm -mm. But now I think it's kind of transferring from new balance to Crocs. Oh. We're seeing a bunch more Crocs coming. To really? Picture. Oh yeah. That's a dangerous choice of shoe to cut the grass. Do you not have Crocs? Well, do you have Crocs, seen. Jeff? No, I don't. I don't think Jeff has Crocs. I don't know. Ooh. Jeff's got good style, and I think he thinks Crocs will throw no. it off. No, I would wear I would wear a Croc, I think. I just have never purchased one. We're getting Jeff Crocs. Yeah. We're getting it, and we're going to do doodads, <laughs> uh, dad gibbets for the Crocs. They're going to be awesome. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be, I, we're going to have yeah, the yeah. faces and the, everything. Yeah, and trailers with full of stuff oh, on them. Nice. We're going to have like a flashlight because you yeah. oh. to get the flashlight for your dad, the rage. Yeah. I mean, fishing line. We're going to do like a bunch of cool dad stuff. It's going to be great. Cool. A toilet. So, I want so to, like, have you seen favorite. the uh, cowboy boot Crocs? Mm. <laughs> have you seen those? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah with the spurs. Should be illegal. They have spurs That's for real. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yep. So That's my daughter, she she's got these Nike Dunks, whatever, and she she's trying to be all cool. I guess she is cool. And I'm like, have you seen these? And I did. I showed her the the cowboy boot Crocs <laughs> with the spurs. And she's like, you're dumb, Dad. <laughs> you're dumb. You are dumb. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm like, I love you. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, if your kid doesn't call you dumb or think you're not cool, are you even doing your job? That's not. Oh, that's a dad thing right yeah. there too. Yeah, it's yeah. our job to embarrass our kids. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's our right, it's yep. our God given right. Mm -hmm. All right, so that, I like that little segment. Maybe every week we'll try to come up with something that only dads do, and then we'll add it to a shirt or something like that. Nice. Um, okay, what do you guys uh, in the comments below? What is the thing that you specifically know that only dads do? Okay. The trailer one is like universal and you don't actually realize it until one day you do it. You're like, that's and you do it and you're right. You're like, I did it. I did that. And you have to say it or the trailer will fall apart. That's what's going to happen. Like it will fly. Everything will fly off. I got one more line that I use. Okay. Like, cause I, I drive a truck and I yeah. load stuff all the time and I always go, ah, I'm just going around the corner. That's what I always <laughs> tell the guy when you, when you load up, but you're not, you're never, you're like going, you're right? Going like kilometers yeah. to the dump. And they'll be like, do you need a flag for that? I'm like, eh, I'm just going around the corner. 
<laughs> and Mark lives nowhere near a home view. No. Nowhere near. He is not going around the corner. Um, okay, so let's get into what are we watching? I love this. I love this segment because it's what dads do. We watch things. So do moms, but they watch garbage stuff. Like, Kathy watches crap. I mean, what she would watch a day is just, there's so much you could watch, Kathy. There's so much you can watch that is good. And she watches trash. And it makes me angry. But you watch brutal. it with her. You told me no. you were watching it with her. Okay, The Handmaid's Tale is different. Like, I knew it was going to be good because we talked about it. But, like, I won't watch her garbage ones. Like, the reality, I don't like it. I like ba- Big Brother. I'll watch that okay. one. Huh. I, I just recall last week, rent free in my head, blah, 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 all that yep. stuff. So, that was Kathy, right? That's her her shows. Which one? I don't know. You said something. Handmaid's Tale. Handmaid's oh, that's Tale. what. Yeah, she yeah. got me on it. Are you still it's watching? It's so good, Mark. You still watching Handmaid's Tale? Oh yeah, dude! I can't stop. I cannot stop. I I was up till three o'clock in the morning the other night because I couldn't. I went to. I'm like, I stopped watching an episode, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to bed. Got to bed. I could not go to sleep no. because the episode was. I had to watch. I, I watched four more episodes. Three o'clock in the morning, I went to bed. I woke up at seven because Kathy had a night shift, and I had to get the kids ready for school. I got three, and I didn't even care. I didn't even care. It, that's how good the show is. <laughs> Probably one of the best shows I've ever seen. Not me, man. Unreal, how good it is. Okay, so that's not what I'm watching. What it. are you watching, Jeff? Uh, what am I watching? Well, I did my homework, like you said. I watched King of Kong, handful of quarters. Yes, yeah, uh, it's it's crazy. I just have one question: Why yeah. is there so much footage? Yeah, like, that's actually a good question. How? I I don't know. I just I that's what I was thinking the whole time. I'm like, how do they have this much footage of this? Like, is it, it's well, not I a documentary, that, is it? It's it's real. That's real. No, it's real. It's 100% real. And I actually reached out to Steve Weeby to see if you come on our podcast. And I don't think he checks his social media. Oh. This guy, to me, is famous. I love Steve yeah. Weeby. If you, you're you going to watch someday, Mark. Such a someday. nice guy. I reached out to him. He's only got like 250 Instagram subscribers. Really? He's not a guy. Like, I don't think he's on social media very much. Sure. I would love to interview Steve Weeby on the show because he's a great dad. He's got this. But you're right. Here's my theory on why there's so much footage. These are nerds. Yeah. In the 90s and 80s, and nerds, AV club, they had access to the VHS camcorders and they had all that stuff that they did. Have. That's what it is. That's what they just had because they're nerds. And I love nerds. Shout out to the nerds. Shout out to the nerds. So what have I watched since last week? Uh, Handmaid's Tale. That's just, oh, no, I did watch a, I did watch a new movie. So the one I watched this week just because it was there, it was on uh, a piece of software that I watch movies on. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but it's called... Um, Land of Bad, and it's got Russell Crowe and uh, Thor's brother. What's Thor's brother's name? Loki? No, like his real name. Uh, what's his name? Chris uh, Hemsworth. Hemsworth? Liam Hemsworth. Liam Hemsworth. Yeah, it's Liam Hemsworth. He's also hot. I'm not going to lie. Like, he's hot. Yeah, they're so both Land hot. Land of Bad. Yeah, like they're both. Can you imagine being that hot going through life? Like, I'd be just such a burden. <laughs> you know, I couldn't even. I mean, I know what it's like. It would sort of suck being up. Thor. Yeah. To have to put on a bodysuit to be fat. Can you imagine having to wear a bodysuit to be fat? Can of, I just say that's one of the most iconic like moments in the Marvel Universe is when he comes out with a big giant beer belly. It's great. Like, no one saw that coming. Oh, that is iconic. Yeah, I love it. Mark doesn't know. I you, know. you have seen. You must have seen the Avengers. Your daughter would make you. Oh, yeah. They probably did. But he felt, you know This me. is Mark watching Avengers. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> The last yeah, you guys ready to ask the me last, what I watched? Yeah, what do you watch? The last oh, full show ahead, Mark ever watched was probably Andy Griffith's show. <laughs> In the black and white. Yeah. Yeah. Like a new release, like when it was a, when it was a new episode. <laughs> so this is a stressful part of the episode for me because we always have to talk about what we watch. Literally, like for real, the only thing I watched this week was when you and I did that snark video on uh, <laughs> on that one annoying. Just oh, my God. <laughs> So Mark that was came over. painful. Mark does when I have Mark oh. show, it's because someone's doing a walk through a house or a build, and like I get him in as the expert, you know, witness on how bad they are. And Jess Lam is I know I don't want to talk about this, like I, I want to leave that on that side, but ugh. Like there's no other way to put it except for ugh. But I was editing that episode, and when she comes out, she's like, What's up? And Mark's face like <laughs> So I feel sorry because Mark doesn't watch anything, and that's what he had to watch for the week. But like, why? <laughs> What I was just, your week like? What was your week this week? Well, I'm finishing my basement right now. So yeah. every night when I'm done eating dinner, I go downstairs and work till Jeez. 10, 11 o'clock. And then I go to bed. Put some TV on where you want. Why are you working? Ah. I won't be able to. Nah. Do you listen to music while you work? Sometimes. Sometimes. This is the thing about Mark. Like he rarely listens to music. It's like if I'm working with him, I put music on. He's like, oh, this is nice. <laughs> Sometimes you get the old school Christian rock. Oh, which yeah. Is great. 90s. But like. 
He doesn't. He doesn't need it. I don't know what's what's in your head when you're working. You're thinking about stuff. I don't know, man. <laughs> I just I'm there's good. not like thoughts. No, like I'm I'm a highly efficient worker though, so like I'm yeah. I've always got about ten steps ahead of myself. Yep. So I, feel like, I don't know. I feel like it's I probably like Russell Crowe in uh, a Beautiful Mind. That's what's happening in oh, Mark's yeah. head. You could do that. You could do that graphic right now. You know the graphic on the glass. So, That's what you put in right now. Oh yeah, I'll put that in. Yeah. I'll put that in. So Mark, show the camera what is, what what your face looks like when you're working. Uh, when I'm working, yeah, it looks the same as right now. <laughs> just I don't just know. Super hot. <laughs> yeah, sweaty maybe a little bit sweaty. <laughs> oh, I love I love working with Mark. It's like so fun. But I I bring the I bring the entertainment. Let's be real. Like that's my job. Yeah, like I hand him some hammers and nails and shit. But he's I I bring the music. But when we put up those rafters, that was crazy. Those things were heavy, dude. What rafters? Well, not rafters. The beams. When we were doing oh, the beams, yeah, 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 yeah. His floor beams were crazy. Engineered. We used like, engineered beams. Yeah. Oh man, yeah, they're yeah. so heavy. It's like lifting steel. Yeah, like yeah. they're crazy. And heavy, one of them dude. was like 16 feet long, wasn't it? It was, it was 22 feet long. So there you yeah. go. And I lifted it with my body, sort of. <laughs> yeah, we both did. Yeah, we both yeah. did. I did, sort of. I needed you. There's no way I would have got those no up there. Way, no way. Way. It was fun. Yeah. I love doing that. Wow. I read kind of an old book. <laughs> mm -hmm. Have you read The Body by Stephen King? I've never read a Stephen King book. It's Not actually one. It's actually the Stand By Me story. Oh. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, I read that. Is it good? Yeah, it's short. It's not hard to read. It's it's an easy read. I just, I wanted to read something. Trish was encouraging me to read something. And I'm like, yeah, I grabbed that book and I read through it pretty quick. Uh, it is, you know how usually you read a book and you're like, eh, the, it's mm -hmm. not as, or the movie's not as good as the book. I feel yep. like the Stand By Me movie is almost the same as the book. And that's, well, did you know that Shawshank Redemption was written by Stephen King? I did not know that. Really? Yep. And so that movie is better than the book too. Like for some reason, Stephen King's movies are better than his books. And that's very, very rare. Like it and stuff. Again, I've never read a book. I've seen the movies, but I've heard through people who read that the movies are often as good or better. I think you, I think you miss, misheard what I said. The, the movie and the book were almost the same. They, they weren't oh, almost like, the same. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They weren't, it wasn't that one was better than the other. I just, as I was reading it, okay. because I'd seen the movie first, I was almost picturing everything that was happening and there wasn't any like, that's true. There wasn't any new stuff that was added in. Like, you know, have you see Ready Player One? Yeah, right? the which movie? you got me reading and it was amazing. So the book is way better than the movie. Way I think, better. I think. and hundred times better than the movie. Yeah. The movie's excellent though, but the book is the movie's light good. years ahead of the movie. Yes. I don't agree. read book two, it's garbage. Book two sucked. I read it. I did too, but You're don't right. like I'm telling it's not people as not. Good. It's not in my can. It's not I, in my can. I still liked it, but not as good. But here's a book you should all read and... uh I've been reading a lot of, I do a lot of audibles now because I cut the grass. I have like two acres of grass. I got, I got, like I say, a lot of time to do audibles, long drives and stuff like that. But Jeff, if I can convince you, and I think I've already told you this a long time ago to read Power of One. Power the of One. The Power of One. And I'll, I'll just give it to you. I have like two copies of it. What's the, I what need you to read The Power of One. It's about this kid in South Africa, grows up in like, he was bullied and stuff as a young kid. He's separated from his nanny. It's like really, he's like super bullied though. Like it's insanity. And he grows up to become a welterweight champion of the world. He wants to be a, a boxer and it goes through his life. It's, uh, I can't explain it more than it's probably the best. I've read it a hundred times. Oh, That's cool. how good it is. Yeah, I want to read that. It is so well done and brutal, but also like hopeful. And the writing is just, it's uh, Bryce Courtney. He's died. He passed away a while ago. I've read since that book, I've read every single one of his books in his library. It's oh, wow. incredible. His, cool. his writing is amazing. But, um, what is the one I read on Audible? Let me just check it. Extinction series. So, Jeff, if you get a chance to get Audible or read books, get the Extinction series uh, by James D. Prescott. Okay? Because Jeff and I, in our old podcast, we interviewed the guy who did We Are Live, which is such a great audio podcast. If you guys want something really entertaining, listen to We Are Live. It's a end of the world zombie apocalypse acted out audio drama. It's <laughs> it's so good. That's good. But uh, I, I finished the Extinction series, like four books, I think. And it was absolutely really, 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 really good. Mm -hmm. So Extinction Series, if you're into like apocalypse stuff, and I love apocalypse. As you guys know, I love apocalypse stuff. It's like my it's my jam. I almost like, here's the thing about apocalypse, people who love apocalypse stuff. And this is, <laughs> I'm going to say it. Like, I think some people want the apocalypse to happen so they can live through it. I'm not kidding. Can, you know why I, I think? I kind of feel like that. Go, Mark. Go sorry. No, I just, I just say I kind of feel like that. Like. <laughs> 
Because I, I just kind of feel like there's so many people that are so completely un- unprepared. Like I can't. I'm kind of looking forward to being somebody that's needed and important and stuff like that. It's true. Because right now it feels like contractors get a big freaking steamer dropped on them every day. You know. Yeah, I, I that totally didn't maybe you. wasn't the right thing to say, <laughs> but uh, yeah. I mean, that's that's a thought. That's like not an intrusive thought, but it's a thought that yeah, like people are like okay. Someone's talking about somebody just <laughs> dropping one there we go but yeah that's i think that's i think mean, part of it people sure. who prep their whole lives prep and like uh, i don't want to like just i want to prep for a reason like i don't want this to go to waste kind of thing can i can i be honest why i think I you yeah. josh you know why you want the apocalypse because you why? love living off of snack food and packaged things i think that's yes that's i agree with that honestly <laughs> I, I will. I will agree. I will agree as well. But I, I haven't tried MREs, but I've got some people sending me some MREs, what? Canadian and US MREs. Yeah, they're going to just send them to me because they have them. What they are you can't saying? Sell. What is the word you're saying? Oh, uh, like military readiness emergency food. Oh, like it comes in a little box, like what soldiers get. Right, disgusting. you get a bag, you put it, boil it. Apparently, it's disgusting. I don't know. I'm going to try it anyway. Have you ever had any, Jeff? No, but I cannot imagine that being any good. There's no way that's Jeff good. is kind of an elitist when it comes to food. Like yeah. Jeff doesn't like Jeff is his food is his like, Oh man, it's his, it's his enigma. He loves food. And he's good at it. And like, Jeff doesn't like gross food. I'll eat anything, man. Like bring it. Thatcher, oh, Thatcher yeah. was Not- busting our balls the other day because yeah. he says, I guess this is a thing out there with the kids. We're, we're an ingredient household. That's what he calls us. Is that so, supposed so to when be they go, when they go to the cupboard or when they go to the fridge, there's no, yeah. There's no uh, Lunchables. There's no Twinkies. There's no yeah. whatever. So we have ingredients to make food. So he's pissed because <laughs> that's why they always love coming to your house so much. It's like going to 7-Eleven. It's like going to 7-Eleven. I also like, I know moving to the country has changed that a little bit. Like we do have snacks food, but like I, Mark convinced me to buy a quarter cow with him. Like I, yeah, yeah. We, it's more, obviously I'm getting into more like, and I, we don't go to eat anymore because it's not there's nothing good where i live it's mm. nothing like very when you i live near kfc you, dude yeah, you KFC. yeah, yeah we get kfc and oh, stuff yeah. but i don't i don't go very often like when i lived where we were jeff mm. like we had it all the time there's so much great food oh, i can great just food. go and get it yeah. in two seconds right where i live there's nothing hmm. and it's not that's not the reason but because we live so far away from things i just don't go out anymore so i'm like saving recipes cooking recipes and everything nice. else i love it but that thai restaurant oh yeah. here is good it is good we I get that about once a month food. it's really good Thai food, this one, the, the the chicken pad thai is glorious. You got to try Penang. Penang. Penang? Curry, yeah. P-A-N-G. Penang. Is, is it hot? Is it hot? It's delicious. Is it hot, uh, Jeff? I think, I think you can, uh, I think you can tell them to make it whatever. Tell them to make it white okay, man's I'm spice. doing that. Just say, give me white man spice. Wait, from what we're watching to what we're eating. That's a good segment. What we're eating. I like that. Mark, what's your favorite thing to eat? Favorite thing to eat? Uh, right now, I, I like I enjoy uh, smoked chicken wings. Ooh, Mark you know? makes good smoke. Mark makes okay. He's the king of smoking, not like cigarettes, but smoking <laughs> food. I yeah. remember last summer. Was it a duck or was it a pheasant? Oh, it was a uh, Cornish hen. Cornish hen. Oh yeah. my, the skin on that thing. Mm, I just want to eat the yeah. skin off it. He he makes uh, wings are amazing. Mark, have you ever? I so I made. Why do you keep thumbs upping? He's pointing at me oh. like that. Oh, okay. It's good. Thumbs up. Uh, Mark, have you ever, uh, well, sorry. Okay. Well, let me start again. Um, I was making chicken thighs tonight. Have you ever smoked chicken mm-hmm. thighs? Yes. Cause I was, it's, I, it's one of the best things to smoke. Yeah. I was looking at those tonight while I was doing okay. it. I put some smoked paprika when I did it and I was thinking, yep. man, these things would be amazing on a smoker. They just have the right fat. Yep. Yep. So I would do those on the smoker. I'd set it in at 250 and it'd probably go for about two, two and a half hours and just, just let it roll slowly. And that smoke would just get infused, especially with the uh, smoke paprika. You'd really, it would really come strong. Do you have a smoker, Jeff? No, I don't, but, uh, but I would get one. Uh, I tried to win one. I, Maybe. I went skiing this week. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I tried to win one at the ski hill. <laughs> I, I did. I did try to win one at the ski hill. So, uh, okay. yeah. So I went skiing this week with uh, some guys from work and it was like a men's day, like special day at this guy's club. And uh, they had yep. all kinds of prizes. I didn't win anything, but I tried to win. A well, smoker. maybe your mom can get you one for son's day. That'd be a good idea. Right. I, yeah. Mark made me get it. Not made me convinced me to get it, the same smoker he has. Yeah. And I've yet to make anything good except for the burnt ends. 
Oh yeah. The burnt ends with the pork belly is the easiest thing. You can't mess it up because you can cook that forever. Like, and it's still great. I tried to do a, uh, what do you call it? Beef that? ribs. I tried to do ribs. No, I haven't done ribs yet. Oh, oh no, I did. did. I did beef ribs and they were decent, but I tried to do the, what's the one everybody wants to do? The big back, long. back ribs. No, no. The big long, um, Oh, brisket. Bri- F failed. How? I failed. Why? And it sucks because I was up first. I was up all night long, every two hours doing the thing I was supposed to do. Too I just, hot. it just got overdone. You had it too, too hot. hot. The thing is, is, I had it set at 250 or whatever it was supposed to be set at. I just, I don't know if I did. I do it like 200, 205. Oh, maybe that's why. Yeah. Cause you don't, years dried out. I'm it wasn't guessing. the worst, but it wasn't like delicious like Mark's. Like it was edible, but it just wasn't, it was like, oh man. So Jeff, like, uh, Josh will come over to my place and I'll, I'll do like, I remember the one time I did burn ends. Josh, oh, I'm doing burn ends. I do, you know, whatever I'll, I'll do up. Josh, like, oh, I'm doing this. <laughs> Anyways, it always always ends up Josh like ah oh, fail whatever you know fail. move on move I on to the next thing. But like so far, like I I I bought the uh, the Blackstone. Have have you ever used experience the Blackstone the griddle the griddle? No, it's a flat top cast iron oh, griddle. Nice, you can use right? spatters. Oh, mm-hmm. you can you can do anything anything with it. So I I I have it. Josh falls in love with it, buys one. Mm-hmm. And then Josh comes over like a couple weekends later. He's like, what are you doing now? And I'm like, smoking, dude. No, I'm not kidding you. Two weekends later, Josh has got one too, right? You know, like it's got his third. I, you know, I don't have a barbecue anymore, which is what I need. I don't have a barbecue. When you yeah. made that video, when you got that Blackstone and you were making those smash burgers, I was dying laughing watching that video with you in your gloved hands touching raw meat and then eating a burger afterwards with your raw meat gloves. I know. <laughs> was I? I oh, yeah. Go the video. Video. <laughs> gotta go watch it. That video has like 700,000 views. Yeah, because everybody that was in my garage. It was in set up. I'm fine with it. I didn't get a 7 It's yeah. red meat. You can eat red meat raw, right? Yeah, I know. But not processed, though. Oh, it, not was pro- processed, it was processed, right? It was Dang ground. It. It's processed. I think I survived. I'm good. Yeah. We're being boring. Let's talk about something good. No, this is good. I like the food. Okay, so let's get into what are we wearing? This is something I'm going to bring up because today I... <laughs> this is why I'm going to bring the segment up. So I'm getting older, and I used to make fun of dad fashion. And now that I'm older and I'm a dad in my 40s, I'm all about it. Like, I got this hat. That's like an old man's hat from I got it from Mexico last year or two years ago when we were on vacation. It's a wide brimmed dad hat, like a cowboy, not really a cowboy hat, but it's like a straw hat. And today I ordered a satchel, a dad satchel. And I'm excited. That's, and Kathy made fun of me. You got a dad satchel or a mum purse? It's a dad, it's a dad satchel because it looks manly. Right. But it's for, it's just for I'm not gonna wear it like I wouldn't wear it out regularly, but I'm when I'm traveling. Just when you're like searching for the holy grail. I do look like Indiana Jones, I'm not gonna lie. You know it's a dad item when you justify it, because then you're like everybody's like, Oh yeah, yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Uh, what is what is it like? So what do you guys like I Mark I know is Costco guy. Straight Costco, right? Costco, Costco, Costco jeans. He wears everything Costco. Yeah. Kirkland. Not Costco, but Kirkland, man. They make good stuff. They do oh, make yeah. good stuff. socks are good. They make good stuff. There's I mean as I get older, I used to think like fashion was like I used to be like, oh, it's cool. Now I'm like, what's comfortable? Can I can I be real? And I'm into these. I'm into these pants. Yeah, go be real. Go for it. Have you guys? So we we've we've sang songs about it. We've talked about it before. The Saks Saks underwear. Oh, the underwear. You still yeah. you still a Saks guy? Oh, I love my Saks. I only have two pairs, and when it comes, like I have a nice. Kathy created me this drawer. I don't know. She bought these things that go in your underwear drawer. Yep. She rolls them up and sticks them in, and like little sorters yeah so it's like i just grab one and when i grab the sacks i pull it i'm like oh yeah it's sacks day <laughs> they are the nicest underwear i have not anymore oh i found i found really? yeah so i've always been on the quest for the best underwear i don't know why i just i've, I've tried so many different ones this one is a mm-hmm. canadian invention these guys are i think from close to you guys you should reach out to okay. them if you want to come on the show these guys mm-hmm. uh they're called man-made I don't know if you've seen the mm-hmm. Instagram. You've probably seen it on Instagram. The ads pop up because they're always there. So I thought it was kind of Instagram gimmick uh, type thing. But anyways, Christmas time rolled around, got a deal, got a pair for myself, and I got a pair for each of the boys. Mm-hmm. They All three of us agree, the most comfortable pair of underwear I've ever worn in my life. Interesting. And, Interesting. and they're, they're less money than the sacks. Have you seen what sacks cost now? They're almost $40 yeah, they're for a pair. For one pair, well, I mean, they're one comfortable. pair of socks. They're almost. I'm telling you, the fabric that these guys make these man made out of, it's yep. it's like butter. And butter. the thing that butter the thing that always bothers me is the riding up. Like sometimes when you wear like a boxer brief, mm-hmm. by the end of the day, the elastic goes and they start to ride up. That does not happen with these. Yep, yep. 
and uh, what are, what are the I other like features? The pair. They have a horizontal flap. It makes for so much. You can be left-handed. You can be right-handed. That's, that's way more sense. You got to see this thing. It's unbelievable. There's no accidents <laughs> popping out. It's so not like that. that does, you're right because the the, the traditional uh, dick flap is yep. generally for with your left hand. No, you got to reach in with your right, right and then you got to bend oh, it sideways. In. That's it's true. like it's no good. You got to. I'm telling you, left, lefties, lefties have just been discriminated against this whole time. Can we be real though? Who yeah. actually uses the the dick flap? I do now. Like, you, but did you before? No, never. I never. I've never. I never used a dick flap. Always I just, oh, I just down. pull the other one. And then it's yeah, pinching. Then it's pinching the uh, yeah, and it's lift or you lift up your balls too yeah. hard, and sometimes it can hurt yeah, it depending on the elasticity. You pull your balls. Do you out? lift? Do you pull out? Do you- I I have tried it just because you feel like you need to. Yeah, it's terrible. Because it's designed. But I just, you know, you, yeah. You just, but you pull down. Yeah. Yeah, everybody. Every guy. I don't even know why they have those. No. Who does that? Who's using them? Well, Nerds, these, guys, these guys have fixed it and you will use it. It's like okay, the perfect, it's like the perfect little piss window for your wiener. Piss window. <laughs> I don't know. Do you guys, Josh, you're going to laugh at me for this one. I know for sure. But do your, do your, your wives ever leave you nice little notes? No. Never? Never. Never leave you nice notes? No. Well, neither does mine, but I did get a note today, but it wasn't a nice one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, she re- she requested that I make uh, some soup today. So I got, I went to the shopping list for the soup ingredients and underneath the shopping list was this list right here. Okay. <laughs> Here's where you're going to laugh at me, Josh. <laughs> so uh, front hall stair trim, guest bedroom trim. You have not done the trim yet, Jeff? <laughs> trim. Now, that's not exactly true. But I knew okay. you'd laugh. No, 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 no. I knew you would laugh at me for this reason. Let me explain. Can I just give the backstory of the trim yes, story? You can I, just before to, you I knew you would. Okay, so the, Jeff, <laughs> it's been like four years or something like that. Jeff's like wife's been bugging him to paint the trim in their house for like four years. And Jeff apparently has not gotten to it yet. I'm on Trisha's side here, dude. I'm no, like, I'm not. sorry. This Can you just listen? Fault. You want to just listen okay, to what's I'm going on with the trim? Okay. So here's the trip. So, <laughs> <laughs> so back four years ago, when mm-hmm. the main floor trim still wasn't painted, I painted the trim. I painted all the trim on the main okay. floor. Thank all God. of it. Looks fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, upstairs, we needed to do some renovations. So we did our bathrooms. Our bathrooms were ancient, right? They were the originals from the house. They were gross, yep. yellowing, stinky. Change them. So now we got nice new bathrooms. When that was done, we changed because all the trim had been ripped off the wall in anticipation of this happening, and it took longer than it should have. Uh, <laughs> but as soon as, <laughs> yes, as soon as as soon as the bathrooms were finished, and we changed all of the doors from being you know the uh, the brown uh, what do you call those panel those flat panel doors you know the old school ones. As soon as those yep. were all changed, I did all the trim and I painted it all, all in the mm-hmm. course of a couple of weeks. So I got mm-hmm. that done mm-hmm. quick, but I missed one and I don't know how I missed it. I think it's because everything was piled in the room. In the uh, guest bedroom, I missed one, <laughs> one window. So I have that <laughs> one window. Okay. And the laundry room, we were going to do something with the closet in there. So I never put the trim in there. And then okay. here, so th- those are all my fault. Yeah. But here's where the question from Mark comes. Mark, I need your expertise. Yeah. So I don't know here if for you, you, brother. I don't know if you recall being in our house. We've got that slight winding staircase. You yes. Know, it's got like, I don't know. It's not, it's not like a grand staircase, but it is a winding staircase, right? Yes. So on the ground level where uh, the curved wall is in the front hall, how do I find a piece of trim to go on there? That's a good question. So what's the profile of your trim? The profile is just five inch flat stock because I went really simple because I like the way it looks. It's like a modern mm-hmm. look, right? Agreed. Yeah. So basically you just take a piece of you take a piece of string and you and you basically you lay the string out for the to get your length of it. Yeah. yeah. Then you take a piece of flat stock and you cut it, and then you slowly you you basically 
tie tie a longer piece of string around it and you just keep flexing it a little bit more a little bit more every day is it is it just a straight curve or is it curve and and rise uh no curve is along the floor it's along the floor along the floor yeah Yeah. so you just basically you take you take a piece of string you could pinch it in two objects anyways but you just keep bending it and bending it and bending it until it's around the the same size and then you just you put it in place so it kind of it takes memory of the of the curve yeah exactly Right, okay. but but you the way you get the actual length of it is you you use a it's piece a of string. Yeah, it makes sense. Right, Hold it, and then you and then you make your you make your cut. Yeah, and then so once once you've got the shape of it, it's already cut to length. Bang, it goes into place. How long will it how take? How many days? Uh, how long? Like, yeah. So is it is it wood or is it MDF that you're it's using? MD, it's MDF. Oh, perfect. That'll bend really easily. So I don't know. Just you, you can you tension it until you feel like you can't tension it anymore. A couple yeah. days later, you tension it a little bit oh, more. Okay. Whatever. Doesn't that's take what was that happening. Long. Like I was trying, I was trying to put pressure on it to see if I could get it to give, and I'm like, this is gonna snap for sure. Yeah. So but, just slowly, just put a little bit. A few days later, a little more. Okay. A couple days. That's a that's a good video idea, Mark. Oh, great video idea. I don't think I think Jeff's the only one with that problem. <laughs> like <laughs> lots of people have yeah, staircases, don't they? Yeah. No, but you know, I I don't th- I don't think. Oh yeah, we we can do it. I'm happy. I'm happy to do it because he's got the proness. So you're gonna do that, Jeff? Tell us how it goes. Can you film it for us? Yeah, I should film it. Mark's got a Mark's got a segment he wanted to add to this week was weird quirks about ourselves, and I actually like this one. I enjoy this weird like, quirks because I've never thought about it. I'm thinking of going like to a place that like I don't know maybe I actually like I thought of my quirk like I've never told anybody I do this like this is a new this is you this is a new thing that I'm doing. Weird in here when okay so. <laughs> I like, I, I really backed off. Like I, I rarely drink alcohol now. I don't know why. I just, I just don't care as much anymore. So, but what happened is, is now I've got a crazy sweet tooth. Like I just, it's like it switched. Yep. Right. And what I've realized is I, I'm, I love like soda, like Pepsi. You, and, and you don't drink it very I, often. I never, I used to never drink it. Yeah. But in the last month I've started drinking it. And which And my two. Well, I like Pepsi. You okay. Like Pepsi, yes. Frenchman. Well, it's <laughs> you, French. And that's what led me into watching the 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 Pepsi oh, thing okay, with yeah, the Harrier yeah, Jet that's right, whatever, that's right. right? Yep. So, anyways, my so what I do is I've got this bathroom in the basement and I actually when I need to go buzz one out, I I go and drink a Pepsi when I'm doing that. What do you mean buzz one out? Oh, poop. drop a deuce. Okay. Yeah. I've never yeah. So that like for I've pooping. been drink. I thought you were talking about a number three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyways, like I drink Pepsi when I poop. Really? Yeah. That's a, that it's, is a weird quirk, dude. Yeah. Well, but buddy, two of your favorite, you like yeah. pooping. You I like pooping. pooping man. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I'll, I'll go to my in-laws. To so that's how much I love pooping. There you go. So now that's a good, that's, I like that quirk. That's a weird one. Are I you know. not worried about poop, dust, flakes? So there's like this bathtub that's right. So it's like I just it sits perfectly on the ledge of the bathtub. Like it's it's wonderful. That is an interesting quirk about Mark yep. that I did not know, and I now I'm I'm better off for knowing it. Wow. So how many Pepsi drink a week? Then you drink one every time you drink every day. Food? I drink one every one day. a day. But I, right. I don't every time because you're on the road, yeah, you know, whatever. Yeah. You're in a porta potty. I like that. Taking your socks. You know. <laughs> taking your socks. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm trying to think of quirk. I have a quirk. Um, I'm trying to think. It's almost we should ask our wives what our quirks oh. are. That might be a little bit better for next week. But I do this thing wherever I tell a joke or deliver a punchline. I do this with my teeth or my jaw. And I don't know why I do it. It's like I'm waiting for your reaction while I'm waiting for it. I do this. I just wait for it. I, don't, I try not to do it anymore because like, I started watching my videos and it started pissing me off because I'm I have to, you know. You watch me every day on the internet and like you, I, you like, it's like it's an intimate knowledge of everything I do. Every time I deliver something or I make a joke and I'm waiting to the, for the joke to land, I will do this with my jaw. <laughs> so keep pay attention. See if I do it. Okay. I've never it's really weird. I don't like it. What's your quirk, Jeff? I mean, this isn't a quirk, but it's kind of fun. My pillowcase that I use at work is still a 1983 original He-Man pillowcase. That's cool. I actually like that. I like that too. And it's mm-hmm. like, do you guys have like a washer and dryer or do you have to have to do laundry? Do you have to, how do you clean your, your, your equipment and, and work clothes? We, we do have we do have a washer and dryer. So when I first got hired, we used to bring our work clothes home. So like, you know, the station stuff, mm-hmm. but the station stuff goes with you to every call. You just wear your, your bunker gear over top of it. So 
Mm-hmm. We used to bring that home and then it was, it was thought, you know, we probably shouldn't be bringing contaminated clothes home to our families. So they did put washers and dryers. Uh, I'm trying to think of how long ago it was. I mean, it's it, less than 10 years ago. We finally got them probably within wow. the last, Interesting. probably within the last six years, maybe. But now I do all my, yeah, all my work clothes mm-hmm. I do at, at work. That's cool. Interesting. Yeah. But his quirk is he has a He-Man pillowcase, and I like that. <laughs> okay. So I love not recycling. Oh. Okay. Interesting. So I watched this one little uh, documentary or whatever on what happens to our recycling. Yep. And it's like literally 10% of our what we put in the recycling bin goes gets, gets actually recycled. The rest just basically gets thrown in the garbage. Why is goes that? in the landfill. Because most plastics are not recyclable. I didn't know that. And yeah. Mark, well, didn't you tell me one day that you saw a guy at one of those three level garbage things open the lid and put everything into the same area? Oh yeah, hundred percent. So it's like totally, li- it's a lie. It's just to make, oh, yeah. I think it's a lie to make you feel better about what you're doing. Oh yeah, like yeah. I, I, I could go off on other things that that happened in construction that you, we pay like insane amounts of money for, right. and but it's a, uh, it's a big, it's goes a big in money the same grab. landfill. Interesting. Nothing, yeah. Interesting, man. All right, I'm going to move on to the topic of the day. Cause we're like, we're getting into this as I'm like, we're already an hour in this podcast. We got to get to this. Um, I want to talk about this quickly, social media and kids and what's mm. been going on with this. And I got this article here for us to read and it's called a marketplace, a marketplace of girl influencers managed by moms and stocked by men. You can't see this, but right here it says this box represents a real photo of a nine year old girl in a golden bikini lounging on a towel. The post the photo was posted by our Instagram account, which is run by adults. Now, there's this big thing I talk about on my channel a lot about the way that people get around the child um, laws on on the uh, not laws, but rules is they just say account ran by mom. It's so stupid. OK, it's so dumb that they're allowed to do this. But this is what happens. So going on, there's another one that says, where is it? So, and these are the comments underneath. There's only one like on that. Well, they're just, they grabbed it oh. from there, but it says, look at this. This is the comments. Oh, wow. No, look at Mama me. Mia. I know this is great. And these are all comments from men on a nine-year-old girl. Oh, I don't okay? want to see it. Great body. Love. Perfect bikini body. Mm, take that bikini off. You're so hot. Y'all oh. are dogs. She's a child. This is a nine-year-old girl what on social media. And I've, I've covered this on my channel. There's a girl that's, named Everly LeBrand. That's on Instagram? At seven, this is on Instagram. Yeah, these Instagram parents post pictures. forced to take that down. The, the, the people will report it and Instagram will not take it down because it's an account ran by mom. But that's it's not. Oh, that's man. I know that's one of the stupidest loopholes I've ever seen in my life. Where's the authorities that are protecting the, children? They're not in again. You can get, we can put a tinfoil hat on right now and talk about why that is. But the, the powers that be don't want to protect children. They're pro- like Epstein is proof of this. Okay. We could talk about it all you want. Well, we, we think it means. But what it means is that they don't want to because they don't want to. But this is changing. This is. So a marketplace of girl influencers managed by moms and stock by men seeking social media stardom for their underage daughters. Mothers post images of them on Instagram. The accounts draw men sexually attracted to children, and they sometimes pay to see more. This is going to piss you off, Jeff. Trigger warning anybody in this thing. This is going to piss you off because there are parents that put their kids behind paywalls and behind those paywalls are more pictures of them in more provocative bikinis and more Stop. things like that. It's, 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 it's insanity and I cannot believe it exists. And this, uh, like at very minimum, this should never be allowed to happen. There should be no such thing as a child under the age of, let's say 16 or like, I would like 18 to be honest with you behind a paywall where you can pay to see photos of a child. This should be illegal in every sense of the, like this should. And the fact that our society allowed this to happen is mind blowing. I thought it was illegal. I thought you can't share, like you can't share underage pornography. Is that not what this is? It's not pornography. It's just kids in bikinis. Oh it's like goodness. really gross or doing the splits or wearing tights at their dance competitions. Like it's really disgusting. Uh. Everly LeBrant, the seven year old that I covered my channel way back in the day, I did an analytical search. I bought these analytics cost me $800 to purchase these analytics. Okay. And what the analytics showed, these were engagement analytics. So these are the analytics that who is engaging with these posts, with these pictures. And it was 70% of men over the age of 24 Seventy percent of her seven million followers were men over the age of of twenty four, looking at a nine year old dancing. People people know like, that. Like I, I think I could the, guess that. Oh, they do know it. But I could guess they, that. And the, and the fact that these people will not change 
even though they know the dangers is the scariest thing. They, they'd rather make money off their child than make changes to protect them. Wow. But th- for this investigation, the reporters analyzed 2.1 million Instagram posts, monitored months of online chats of prof- professed pedos, and interviewed over 100 people, including parents and children. This is a crazy article. I'm only going to just gloss over it real quick. The ominous message began arriving in Alyssa's inbox early last year. You sell pics of your underage daughter to pedos? Read one. You're such a naughty, sick mom. You're just as sick as us pedos. Read, an- read another. I will make your life hell for you and your daughter. Alyssa had been running her daughter's Instagram account since 2020 when the girl was 11 and too young to have her own. Photos show a bright, bubbly girl modeling evening dresses, 11 years old, high-end workout gear, which, you know, is like tight Lululemon-style things, and dance leotards. She has over more. She has more than 100,000 followers, some so enthusiastic about her posts that they pay $9.99 a month for more photos. This mother puts her child behind a pedo wall, we'll call it that instead of a paywall, for 10 bucks a month from these guys, and she knows who's buying it. Women aren't buying this. Teenagers aren't buying this. Other dance moms are not buying this. It's men. Okay. It's the scariest thing in the world. Over the years, Alyssa has fielded all kinds of criticism and knows full well that some people think she's exploiting her daughter. She has even gotten us used to receiving creepy messages, but these from Insta model fan were extreme. I think they're all pedos. She said of the many online followers obsessed with her. I'm going to talk about this in my channel in depth, but basically she knows that they're pedos and still sells pictures of her daughter. As dads, she wants the sworn money. to protect our children. She wants the money. But if you knew your child could possibly be sold to pedos, would you do it for, let's say, a million dollars? Would you do it? Not at no. all. Never. And this is the thing. These, par- these parents know the danger. They admit it openly that they know the danger, and they still continue to do it. Anyway, I'm going to go what over you, this on my channel. In- your, what are you saying your daughter's worth at that point? Like That's my issue. Yeah. My daughter's worth far more than a million dollars. And yeah. and you can't put a monetary value on that. That's crazy. Yeah. I know. The one job we have in this life is to protect our family, mm-hmm. like as men. So I, I would be failing if I signed up for that nonsense. And the thing is, is that these are mom run accounts generally. It's not men doing it. And it would be even more disgusting if men were doing it. But this is the, this is acceptable because it's the mom doing it. Mm-hmm. Where is the dad in these situations a lot of times? Like where I see not stepping up. And some of these parents of these kids do have dads who are in the picture and they just are silent on it. If you are a dad and you allow this to happen to your ch- children, shame on you. You failed. You, you, you failed, failed so hard. But the reason I bring this up is because a couple things happened. Obviously, in Congress, they had all the big social media guys in the front where even Zuckerberg got up and apologized because kids are dying from being online bullied. There are kids now in schools who um, post pictures of themselves on the internet, and these boys are taking these photos, or boys and girls, I don't know what they're doing. To online bully them, they create artificial intelligence corn that depicts them and this has happened with Taylor Swift. This has happened with a lot of people. You, it takes it takes no time at all now with the technology. You can do it on your phone. And you can put their picture over and it superimposes them into PRN. It literally creates, looks just like them because you're using their image and, and oftentimes their voice because people have their voices on the internet. And they turn and now these girls are being bullied and blackmailed at school. They're saying, look, they, it starts spreading around schools and girls and, and boys are committing suicide because of it. So this is the danger of having your children online and let me just say this it is so hard for us parents to not want to give our kids everything um to like help and we can have all the conversations in the world about how to protect your kids and how to have a conversation with the kids but there is only one answer to this as it's getting worse is to not allow your kids to be on social media ever and for the simple reasons that you love them and you want to protect them and that's really all you have to say to them it's never when they ask you why they can't it's never saying because i said so don't ever say that Okay, here's, I know this is going into dad advice, but here's what you got to do. You have to have a sit down conversation. You got to read them an article like this when they're old enough to understand it. You have to tell them the reason I don't want you on social media is because I love you and I want to protect you and it's my job. And here's why it's so dangerous. And here's the stories like the Ava Madri, which I talk about a lot where the girl's dad, she had a stalker come to the door, blow their door off with a shotgun, was going in to kill the family, but his gun jammed. And then she was 14. And then he came, he came back after he ran away. Her dad was waiting for him and shot him in the head and killed him. He was the next cop. Like this happens. There's people, and these are famous kids. I'm, I'm, and I'm talking about any kid. If you if you care at all about your children, and I didn't even think of this until the last couple of years, do not let them have social media accounts until they're ever. I mean, I, if you can hold off as long as possible, as long as humanly possible, please do that. And don't post them without their consent at, at, at very, very, very minimum. That's my whole take on this thing. Mm. Thoughts, dudes? That's heavy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I agree. Protect your kids and talk to them. I mean, Tom gave that advice last week, right? Don't lie to your kids. So if they are old enough to, if you feel they're old enough to have an account, 
then you should be, they should be old enough to have the conversation of why it's dangerous. Right. So, I mean, we already yeah. said, and again, if you say it with love, why is there a shovel behind you, Jeff? That's great. That's going on. Is that a shovel? Snow shovel. I don't know. Is it a shovel? It's weird. Anyway, I um, like the shovel. Yeah, but I like that idea. Just like have an honest conversation. If you tell your kids you love them and you're doing to protect them, they might be mad, but that's a little easier to take than I said so. Yeah. Let's listen to me. But you know what? They're not going to. If you the, honest conversation. We, we say I said so, but here, here's the other problem. Half the time, or not even half the time, I would say probably 99% of the time, the reason that we're allowing them to have the social media is because, well, everybody else is. So we use yep. that excuse on that side. And it's just unfortunate. We gotta, we gotta grow some balls. It's really hard for kids because we were kids. I know, and we wanted everything everybody else had. We understand that. I, know, I think we're I the, we're the generation that we're like, we don't want our kids to miss out and yeah. blah blah blah. But I, to promise you this, if your kid's not on social media, they'll be fine. Okay, they'll be just fine without it. Yeah, like they can peruse it if you want. If you want to give them some leeway to like check out funny videos and blah blah blah. Right. But don't let them on it. Don't let them post images and videos. Mm -hmm. Don't let them. Mm -hmm. That's it. If you love your child, you will do everything in your power to protect them, and that's one way you can do it. Mm -hmm. In honor of Tom, we got a, something for sports. Oh yeah, let's do sports. Since since Tom couldn't be here, I I came up with uh, one sports news, and it is uh, at MLB Spring Training. Have you heard about this uh, new jerseys and the pants from Nike? No. So Nike Nike has the contract with MLB for their for their gear, and mm -hmm. this this year their uh, their pants, most of the pants are see through. <laughs> so I don't know what they did with the fabric. It's this new, yeah, it's this new fabric. So they can see, you know, you can see the tucked shirt through the fabric, or you can see their underwear, you can see tags. So I mean, I don't think anybody's going commando, so that hasn't happened yet, but it's kind of a, a big debacle. And they don't have enough. They don't have enough pants to go around. So they're not sure what they're gonna do for the season. Oh. You see they it? are see through. Yeah, you see that? Yes. Why? Is this a uh, what the heck? Is this on purpose? Balls? This is on purpose. Some why would they do that? Some kind of mistake, I think. Those are terrible, <laughs> dude. <laughs> so that's you can literally if they didn't tuck the shirt in, you'd see their balls. And like, especially if the sun is like shining through one side, like that's gonna be like well, you're gonna see their balls. That was one of the one of the uh, complaints was you know it's not just in under studio lights. It's actually guys in like dim <laughs> lobbies. You can still <laughs> see right through their pants. So oh, that's. Nike of all people, they, you failed. Uh, they should have. I forget the name of the company you used to do it. That's Go ahead. that's Nike probably trying to keep up with Lululemon. Doesn't Lululemon make see-through pants? Lululemon makes quality uh, gear, and no, I mean unless they're so tight that when they bend over this this fabric stretches. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm just joking. You see through, and that, that does happen. But like, I feel like Lululemon should take on the uniforms next year. I'd see those. But Murano or some company used to do it, and they used to make really, really quality uniforms, really, really good stuff. The the other thing with these uniforms too, the big complaint, I guess these guys are used. To, I mean, these are pro athletes. They're used to tailored uniforms. These guys mm -hmm. are getting measured, and they're just being given one of four different body types. So now the stuff's not even tailored it's like, anymore. It's like, ah, oh, here you're the uh, you're this body type. You're that body type. That's little league level garbage. Yeah, that's little league. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. What the players have to say about that? That's cool. Not cool, but not cool. But interesting. Also interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. It's all wow, good. Good sports up there. I love that. All right. Good. Jeff sent me a video. Apparently, he wants me to react to it and us to react to it. So, so uh, this, blindly. So I'm going to pause. This, it. this video is not a joke. Okay. It's not a. Uh, it's not a cringe. It's actually just talent. I think for for me, anyways. Okay. So this guy's a beatboxer, and I have yep. never heard anything like this. Like he's he's unbelievable. Hey, let's hear it. He's using these mics. Somebody said it's all you. He can sing. Wow. Oh, that bass line is so good. I just kept it to myself. I don't want to be on the low. Oh, God. Close my heart. Stick it any more. If you creep, that was dirty. Don't let it show. Oh, Ooh. baby, I don't want to. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay. 
Oh. I can't. I'll probably get copyright strike to keep it what on. What do you think of that? that? Okay, so here's my take on it as a musician. His bass lines were perfect, which leads me to believe that maybe there's some type of tuning going on or whatever, but it's not. So he's got the video without the mic. <laughs> okay. Because everybody was saying that in the comments. Everybody's giving it. Yeah. So there's a there's a slight drop in richness, I would say, without the mic, which makes yeah. sense. But well, I mean, he's got reverb galore on it. He's got effects crazy on it, which is good. It's fine. No, it still shows his talent. Listen to it without the mic. He can do that okay. stuff. He is doing the the reverb and the uh, the effects. It's crazy. Oh, he's doing the no way, buddy. It's unbelievable. He oh, he's incredible. Stevie, I can already tell he's an incredible singer. If you creep, please don't let it show. Oh, baby, I don't. Okay, yeah, he's he's really really good yeah. it's per his the bass pitch is what it's is what gives me a boner <laughs> like when it comes to the ba the pitch of that low note but the way that he hits it so perfectly is so good but i will reiterate that the first one he's adding reverb in post he's in a room here with reverb so he's adding reverb but it's just i'm not saying that it the reverb is just a thing it doesn't change the fact that he's talented right, he's right, right. very okay. very very good but that he is, I would see him live. Yeah. That is so good. It's unreal. You got to see his other videos. He probably has to practice that for thousands of hours to get it that good. Oh, I imagine he's been going forever, but he's, he's unreal. He's done a couple of collabs and stuff too. Done some other songs. He's, he's amazing. All right, guys, this is the end of the podcast. And at the end of our podcast, we always give a little bit of dad advice because it's important. I think we did at the beginning anyway, or, or during the talk about the internet thing. Um, but my dad advice this week is to, um, when you go on vacation with the kids, which I'm about to embark on, make sure you spend some time with your kids <laughs> like make it make memories on those vacations because it's really really tempting and easy to just like i'm having a nap and doing my own thing let the kids do the thing really 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 try to do something that you like you should do like a hike something crazy something they can mem do do like save a memory for when you go on vacation really 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 include your kids because i've been on lots of vacations and i've seen a lot of people and i've been guilty of this myself where they're just like let the kids run off do their own thing and never and never spend time with the kids on vacation. Yeah. That's my, I know it's weird advice, but I, I like that. I think phones, phones make that worse now too, right? Like even see people at the playground with their kids and they're just on their phones. I used to play tag, jumping off the, yeah. you know, jumping off the playground, playing tag. It was awesome. Yeah. Pay attention to kids. Be with your kids. Be present with your kids. That's a really hard one. And every parent is guilty of that, including myself. We got one. Anyway. Yeah. So uh, just, I don't know. I was, I was just chatting with my kids this week and I was asking them like, uh, you know, like, what do you want what do you want me to do you know like what do you need like nobody really gave me the handbook on being a dad you know and mm -hmm. uh, and my kids like when i when i'm honest with my kids like that they like it's it's unreal how much it's like the next few days they're just closer you know i felt a lot closer to them so like just be honest with your kids like you're asking questions like what do you want me to do as a dad or like what yeah like is there something i could do to be a better dad or do things yeah. like what do you want to do you know my daughter's that's a really, like that's a hard question that a lot of people don't she's want like, to ask their kids and that would be yeah a good one. she's like yeah let's just let's throw the football more that's my favorite when you do that and whatever you know like so nice. just stuff like that i love that i love that jeff you got one yeah just paint paint the trim guys just <laughs> <laughs> paint the damn trim your wife's paint gonna like, just do the thing yeah, I like how know. long did it take you from the time that she asked you to paint that trim till you actually did it? It's, it's I, over a year. What, like the first time, like with the main yeah. floor? I don't know. Yeah, we were always doing stuff. Oh. We were making cool videos and doing things. I couldn't paint the trim. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> You're more of a Picasso, though. You yeah, know, like, like uh, painting trim is so below you. Right? No, but Jeff is meticulous in everything he does. His house is beautiful. Like it's always clean. Jeff does nothing half-assed or improperly. Nothing. I don't know That's what I know about except Jeff. For, except for getting to painting the trim. Um, yeah, and, I don't know, Mark. Do you, I mean, you got somebody else to paint the trim, right? Like, you're not paying the trim. You're, you're oh, I'm that. paying the trim of my house. No, no, no. He, I paid the trim of my house. Do you not hate it, though? It's painting trim. I hate painting trim. Painting baseboard, I hate. Yeah, baseboard, yeah. for sure. Yeah. That's yeah. the worst. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do what your wife says, Jeff. I don't surprised. know. Dude, yeah, I like it. I mean, there's some deep stuff there, but <laughs> uh, guys, if you guys like this podcast, we really appreciate you if you left some comments below about what you want us to talk about. Maybe you've got a funny video that we should react to the comments. That'd be awesome. Or you've got something nice to say or something bad to say. We'll read those too. <laughs> but thank you for being here, everybody. Make sure you subscribe. 
hit the bell, head over to our audio podcast, leave a five-star rating. Make sure you listen to that and uh, just make sure you stay cool because you are cool and we think you're awesome. I don't know if they do, but I think you are. Thanks for being here. Thanks everybody. See you. Yep. We'll see you.